Well, here we are again. Uh, so look, I did that last video and I was editing it and I thought, well, this is a really nice format. You know, it's casual. We're just coding here together. And I feel like, you know, I feel like we're getting closer to each other. And that's got to mean something. So um, I, I had been working for like a week on this video called uh, you know, SAS or how I use SAS. And I'm, I kind of like it. it. I'll be honest, it's not my favorite video I've ever made, but whatever. Uh, hopefully you get something f from it. Um, and then I made this last video like 10 minutes ago, which was about... Uh, what was it about? What was the last video I made? Seriously, it was oh dimensions, right? The Chrome, uh, the Chrome app called Dimensions, which helps you um, uh, do media queries uh, easier when you're des uh, developing responsive websites. So um, this format emerges in the last video where I'm just talking to the camera here. Hello, camera. And uh, it's one take. I'm also recording my screen as I'm recording this. And so when I go in to edit it, the only thing I'm doing is just switching from, from rec uh, recording to recording. And they're synchronized. It's really fun. It's really cool. Enjoy it. So that was like 20 minutes ago. And I figure, hey, if I have a few more things that I can talk about, make a few more videos tonight, we can have a video every day for the first week that I'm releasing videos for the year. And that's a really nice way to open up the year, probably. We'll see how it goes, but this will be video three. Um, I just want to explain like cool little tips and tricks, I guess, or cool little tools that I've been using here and there. So uh, the first one, when I did SAS, I focused on CodeKit as a means to process your SAS. And uh, There we are. I actually so I have mixed feelings about that video because it it rehashes a lot of content that I went over with the preprocessor video on the end of the CSS uh, basics um, video series. But all is well. It's good content and it's important to know. And so we learned our repetition. We're all friends. Let's just have conversations that we've already had before. That way we can just you know be friends. Whatever. So. Also, another update on the kids. Remember, they're sleeping. Uh, one of them woke up, the little boy, Eames. Uh, I'll get him on camera sometimes. He's a cute little devil. But he, uh, he woke up, and he was, like, really, really mad. And, and it's, like, uh, it's 11 o'clock uh, p.m. And he, he was, like, like, in his tired little face. And he was, like, he hit my arm with, like, a little weak little hand because he's only one, one year old. And uh, I was, like, you're pathetic. I could take you, is what I thought. I didn't say it because I wanted him to just be quiet and go to sleep, so I didn't want to challenge him to a duel right in the middle of his of his um, sleeping time. So anyhow, uh, finally hold him and walk back and forth across his room, pace like 50 times each way across the room, and finally he goes to bed, and um, that was the update. Nobody has stabbed themselves with scissors. Although my girl, she's three, she was uh, running around with a toothbrush in her mouth. She trips over the rug and falls on her face and stabs her toothbrush inside. Why am I telling you guys this? Anyways, blood is gross. So uh, what I want to do today is jump back into CodeKit and show you one really cool and unique thing that CodeKit does above all of the other preprocessors, and it doesn't actually have anything to do with SAS. Um, the, the creator of CodeKit created a, a new language called .kit, and it's an open source language, but you can use CodeKit to, to use the language. And what what .kit is, is a, um, I guess you'd call it like a preprocessor for HTML, um, where, where SAS uh, will add things like imports and variables that I discussed in the first video this week. CodeKit adds those same things, imports and variables, to just regular HTML. So let me jump into this, uh, let me jump into this um, 
right here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is the, the dot kit website. Now um, it has it explains the things it does and gives you examples on on how to accomplish it. Imports and variables. Really simple but but so so powerful and also missing from basic HTML. So now I have a website here. Um, it's like a one page portfolio that I made for my friend a while ago. And there's a you know it's just a the basic one page portfolio, right? I've seen these a million times. But when I go into the HTML, um, the HTML is just really long and kind of not messy, but just there's just a lot to it, right? And wouldn't it be nice if each section of this one page portfolio, like there's the, the work section, the links section, the resume, the about, each one of those had their own document for coding reasons that would be cleaner for me to have you know organized and if you're anything like me you definitely want it organized because I'm kind of a neat freak with my files and uh, so that really appeals to me so let me show you how this is done I'm going to take this index dot okay first thing actually I have to open CodeKit <laughs> and drop close into it okay so yeah so I'm going to take the index dot HTML and I'm going to Oof, what did I do? Uh, I'm going to rename it to index.kit. And CodeKit sees that it's index.kit. So if I compile it there, it'll pop out another index.html. So all it did is just render index.kit into index.html. But now I, that I have the KIT file, I can start creating new files to house uh, things that I will, you know, those partials that I'm going to be using. So the first thing I want to do is create a space for the, the header. So I'm going to call it header.kit. And I want another one called about.kit. Oops. That one's called kit.text. Okay. And then I want another one called, there's another section, work. Yeah, work. Rename to work. KIT. Uh, another one called. The res you let's call it res.kit and contact.kit. Okay, so in the index.kit I have all my stuff. So I'm gonna, this is my header. I'm gonna grab these lines uh, and this one and control X to cut and header paste. There we go. And then in my index, I'm going to click, uh, type at include header. And then I'm going to make that all a HTML comment. So I refresh code kit. When you add files to code kit, you have to kind of refresh code kit so it can look. I mean, it refreshes on its own, but you can manually refresh it so that it can be aware of all the files that are inside your working directory. So after I added all my files, I just refreshed it so it can track them. So I added header to my kit, and you notice that header is grayed out here. It does not compile uh, directly compile because it's imported into kit. And there's a little imports list. Header is imported in the kit. Okay, so the output of HTML, index.html means that there is actually the header there. So it'll all work just as we wanted it to. So let's go back to index, take this about section, command x, go to the about kit, b, save, and write in, include, what was that about? And I'm going to do the same for section work. Yes. 
Command V, Command Save. Good. Oops. See how it, see how it output right there? Uh, that's because I have not yet added the import statement into Kit, so it doesn't know that it's supposed to be imported and not compiled directly. So when I add that include statement into the the index.kit, it'll stop it'll stop uh, compiling directly. I wonder if it'll remove the .html entirely. Let's take a look. Work .save and oh no, I didn't make it a comment yet. They have to be HTML comments and save and let's look at the log here. That happened. No, I guess the work didn't move to trash. Oh, yeah, I guess it's kind of messy. It doesn't uh, clear out. It doesn't clear out the uh, the files that have been compiled, but then subsequently given import statements that compile directly at the time. So I guess it's good to write your import statements before you create the new files to save out. I don't know. I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, index.kit work. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to do an include right here. Oops. Wrong shortcut. Okay. And then I'm going to take section res x save. And then that include contact. So when I do these tutorials, I, I often get like nervous when I start typing or talking and stuff because I, I kind of sound really dumb when I type. I sound really dumb whether I'm typing or not. But I sound extra dumb when I type because I can't really talk and type at the same time. My brain just won't let me. So I feel like I'm really boring to you guys as... Is this thing even recording? <laughs> it is. I always get worried about that. So anyway, I feel like I'm super boring when I'm doing the type and talk thing and also when I'm coding in front of you. I feel like you guys are like... I don't know. Just a... Um, what is it called? self-conscious. I'm very self-conscious about this. Coding in front of people because I feel like I might be boring everybody. And But, you know, the truth is, sometimes if you're not into it, coding can be boring and shame on you for not liking it because it's awesome. Oh, see what happened there? Um, I have a closing div right here for some reason. That means... Section Well, my phone is right here. It closes the deal. Oh, this whole section is part of the contact page. I ended early. Okay, and then contact, and then there's the finish, and then just the adding the scripts to the bottom. Add your scripts to the bottom of your HTML page if you don't already do that, because they can uh, JavaScript, if it doesn't work, it actually stops everything. Whereas CSS, if, it, if there's a broken statement inside it, it'll just barrel, barrel roll right over it. Uh, barrel roll, it'll barrel right over it, and uh, it won't really affect anything except for that thing which is broken. But JavaScript will just, it'll choke. So that's why you put it at the end of the page because everything will load first, then get to the JavaScript, then choke, and then nothing will be destroyed, or at least it'll be less impactful if your JavaScript sucks. Anyway, that's it. So check this out. In our code kit, look at this. 
our whole document is just 37 lines and we have all these really clean sections to go work in. If I want to sort out my resume, I'm going to go here and look for it and sort it out. If I want to do my contact, I'm going to do it right here. About right here. So here's a, another tip. Um, your code editor probably won't recognize the, the .kit file type. So you can tell it, so in, in Espresso I can tell it what language it should be and manually tell it to look like HTML because it really, it, it codes like HTML. So if I tell it HTML, code kit, or my code editor will recognize it, do some syntax highlighting and shortcutting and, and all those good things for me. So that's it. This is the .kit language. This is super, super cool when um, you haven't really set up a server yet to do your includes if you're like writing um, like PHP or, or Ruby or something you know like a server a server language often handles these including type uh, features but they're like so freaking handy and not available in regular HTML and that's the pain point that uh, CodeKit addresses quite well also I really like the way they do it so use kit if you want to rapidly prototype something with multiple pages um, like you can create like a header or a, like a menu dot kit and just put that same menu in all of the you know your about your contact your portfolio page and then if you need to change the menu you can change it in that partial or that's what it's called a partial the thing that is imported you change the menu in that and then it shows up it propagates across all those different pages because you're just editing that one part Hopefully this is not too complicated or too basic, but exciting to you guys if you like to just quickly jump in and rapidly prototype something. .kit. Now the, you'll have to do a Google search for .kit because it's not really apparent on the CodeKit website how to like get to the docs of how to write the KIT language, but it's super worth it. I, I really, I, I can't say enough about how great it is if you're going to do early stage prototyping. Or just making up, making something you know for yourself like this one page website, but you don't want to you know write it in a server language. Um, okay, that'll be it for today's video. Uh, remember that you can subscribe to the channel. I'm not going to do a huge thing right now, but uh, subscribing is good because every Monday at least and oftentimes more throughout the week I release these videos and I want to make them as accessible to you as possible so giving them to you in your YouTube feed is something that will happen if you subscribe to the channel obviously and uh, I really appreciate you coming uh, well at least is that a joke? No. I really appreciate you visiting the video. I don't know how to make words that sound good right now. I appreciate you watching this video. I think that it's great and that you are a great person and valuable. It's also midnight and that's why I'm talking so dumb. Take it easy.